Welcome to this latest edition of the Molecule Pod by Eurogas. Today we're delighted to be joined by Matthew Baldwin, who is the Deputy Director General of DG Ener, the Energy Department of the European Commission. There he's responsible for the Energy Platform Task Force, which aims to end the EU's dependence on Russian gas as soon as possible. On today's Molecule Pod, we'll take a closer look at the EU's repower plans and more specifically at the joint purchasing of gas and the aggregate EU platform. We'll also discuss ways in which the European Commission is making it easier in future to bring biomethane, hydrogen and renewable gas to market. Good afternoon to you, Matthew, and welcome to the Molecule Pod by Eurogas. Uh, Thank you so much for joining us today. Great to be with you, Mathieu. Thanks a lot for the opportunity. No, you're more than welcome. We have a few things to get through today. Uh, Notably, uh, as I'd mentioned in the introduction to this podcast, we're going to be having a look at the aggregate EU platform. Now, of course, this is something which we really need to unpack for our listeners uh, who are based uh, all over Europe and beyond, and not just uh, those in the the gas sector, but in the energy sector and in other fields. So, uh, first of all, what, what are we talking about when we're talking about the aggregate EU platform? What is that and why does it matter? Well, let's step back for why we launched this whole thing called the Energy Platform, which is a European Union initiative under the Repower Plans. And all of this flows from this despicable and warranted war launched by Russia on Ukraine, which has had a major impact on our energy markets. Indeed, many people would, I think, rightly identify that this is part of Putin's war to try to blackmail our member states, uh, to divide our member states, to divide Europe. Uh, and, and, and thereby to use this as, as a weapon of the war. Uh, and what we try to, to set out with the energy platform is to uh, look at three different elements. Firstly, to do a big international outreach to different suppliers. As we diversify out of Russian gas, it means we need to find new molecules to replace the ones that we've lost. At the same time as we're combining this with a big effort uh, to uh, increase our renewables, to increase our energy efficiency. So that's the first thing. It's a reach out. Secondly, to look at how we best use our infrastructure in an efficient way and make best use of our infrastructure. And third, last but not not least, to look at joint purchase of gas, which is a new thing inside the European Union. It's been talked about for a while, but we've never done it before. And it starts, hence the phrase aggregate EU, with the aggregation of demand, um, which is something that many of your companies in Eurogas, the midstreamers, they do that already. That's what their business is about, bringing together gas from different sources. And why are we doing that? Firstly, we're trying to uh, bring in uh, new suppliers who haven't previously been selling uh, gas to Europe. Uh, I know there's a finite amount of gas and LNG out there, but we we know we're we're keen for them to be able to market that, but also to reach some of the smaller players, some of the the guys that haven't necessarily been buying gas in this way. So it's, it's a dramatic step. We've taken the first steps, and I'm delighted to have the opportunity today to discuss some of those elements with you. Thank you, Matthew. No, this is uh, this is crystal clear. I think <laughs> what it is, why we need it uh, for all the for all the reasons you've outlined. Um, but if I could just take you uh, take you a bit more into the details, how would you, I suppose, rate the success of the of the kind of recent uh, first steps that we've had towards this new joint purchasing? This is up and running since uh, since oh, since only a few weeks ago, since very recently. Perhaps you could tell us a bit more about the process, a bit about what's happened so far, and yeah, as I mentioned, what what kind of success are we talking about uh, during these early first steps? Thank you very much. Well, yeah, it's very recent uh, these first steps, and I have to tell you, we're really pleased uh, with the results uh, so far. Let me just take you back a bit further than the last few weeks. So that the legal powers for this stem from the Council Solidarity Regulation that was agreed in December. On the back of that, we were able to appoint a service provider, Prisma, who will be known to many Eurogas folks. Um, and they've set up this uh, aggregate EU platform in, in, in record time and, and got us ready for the first steps towards um, joint purchase. And the goal we've set, if you like, is for member states to aggregate their demand to 15% of their storage filling obligations, which should amount in about 13 and a half BCM of gas. So this is a good first test, if you like, of our ability to do joint purchase. It started with demand aggregation then. So we invited companies to um, submit their gas demand onto the platform. We had 63 companies from right across Europe expressing their very strong interest. And this resulted in more than 11.6 BCM of gas demand for the next 12 months, aggregated across 21 different virtual trading points across Europe. We then launched the supply side to see what offers of gas came in to meet this demand. 
and we managed to attract and match bids from a total of 25 suppliers who've offered the equivalent of more than 13.4 BCM. In addition, there was an, uh, about another five BCM of supply that wasn't matched because their prices were uncompetitive. But if you look at that together, that's around 19, just under 19 BCM of gas being supplied or offered for supply by 32 companies. Very encouraging. But would it all match with the aggregate? aggregate demand. Remember, we're looking at different virtual trading points and two LNG points. And we also wanted to make sure, of course, that it met the the month by month requirements. This is gas which is uh, being sold for delivery as early as June, but as late as next year. And really encouragingly, when we did the matching process with Prisma, we discovered that the most competitive offers from suppliers, including a number of international suppliers, covered an overall demand of 10.9 BCM. 8.7 of that uh, uh, of gas via pipeline and about 2.2 BCM on LNG. So really encouraging. We're covering about 90% of the uh, aggregated demand and, and matching it. And these bids cover 18 of the 21 virtual trading points. So it's well spread right across Europe. And uh, and I leave the, the description of this to Vice President uh, Chevkovich, who, who, who said this is really nothing short of a remarkable success. Um, one thing that I'm really excited about is if you look at the most vulnerable countries in Europe, the results there were particularly positive. For example, the gas deliveries requested by, Gar by Bulgaria have been fully matched. Uh, and in Ukraine and Moldova, 100% and 80% uh, respectively of, of the volumes requested have been matched. So we're really making a difference where we most needed to make a difference. There's a long way to go. This doesn't mean that the gas will yet be uh, packaged up into contracts and sold. That's now left for the companies to negotiate. The Commission and Prisma are playing no role in that. But I think we've shown there is a demand to bring gas, sorry, to express demand for gas through the demand aggregation and to bring gas to this new market we've created. Good first steps. Yep, many thanks, Matthew. No, once again, you're you're very clear about that. In fact, you were um, you've gone into a little bit of detail about pretty much how much of a gap in in the, the supply of gas this is expected to fill. And uh, of course, as you said, the results are more more than encouraging. I think if we just break it down for again for listeners who are a bit less familiar with the uh, with with the numbers with the gas sector itself, to what extent do you think this will really help us with energy security the next winters? And it's and it's great that you mention um, EU member states and potential future member states because of course they are the ones who do, will especially need need this help. But um, what what are your impressions generally for what this is going to mean for us in the European Union and beyond next winter? The next winter, it's the next several winters. <laughs> exactly. Well, it's the first steps towards joint gas purchasing, which we think can make a big difference in the in the future. But it also needs to be seen as part of a of a you know quite a large package of measures which we've been working on over the course of last year. Remember, we're stepping fast out of uh, gas coming from Russia, down I think in terms of pipeline gas from fifty five percent to around eight percent just in the course of a single year. So we've coupled this with demand reduction measures with requirements on member states to do a high level of storage filling, 80% last year, 90% this year. Um, and we've succeeded in replacing a lot of gas uh, uh, with big new supplies coming in, notably from countries like the US, but, uh, but also from, from additional supplies coming from Norway. So all of this helps um, in, that, in that context. The European energy platform is, is trying to address a number of different issues. Um, and uh, I think you should see it as part of our toolkit, part of our package of measures, which will help us get through next winter. No one is complacent on our side about how challenging that could still be. If we get a, a burst of a really cold weather or we have a, a, a problem affecting our LNG supplies or if Russia finally turns the tap on the remaining gas, we could still face problems. But we're in a better we're in a much better position as a result of this and some of the other measures that we've taken in the European Union over the last uh, over the last few months. Yeah, uh, understood, Matthew. Great. That's uh, no, it's, just, it's a very, uh, very salient point indeed. I think many more winters to come, and uh, no one should, should or should be complacent. Um, just, just to get into the detail on one point, though, I've got a very useful uh, European Commission uh, graphic uh, sat in front of me. Uh, if, could we perhaps take people just to spend a couple of minutes on the process for the for the tender? So essentially, you're saying that there is a uh, in the demand aggregation uh, kind of part, there is a the submission of demand, and then is the aggregation of demand and the preparation of the tenders but then of course only then you're moving on to the to the tender and matching so 
Uh, so in that case, what happens then is that the, the submission of bids and only then there's a matching. And that's even before bilateral negotiations. Is that right? That's right. You need to say it in phases. Uh, so I think we had a week. Uh, we gave companies a week to come forward with uh, aggregation of demand. Then we checked that demand. We needed to, to make sure, for example, that it met the minimum volume requirements, that the gas wasn't coming from Russia. So we needed to, to double check on, oh, sorry, that the demands weren't being expressed from Russia and that, and that all the, the Russian gas is, is completely free from this. Then we launched the, the supply side. And that was really the moment of truth. Would uh, 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 international gas suppliers, gas suppliers from, from Europe and across the world want to bring their gas to this platform. And that was the, the really encouraging moment where we saw, as I said, 25 suppliers coming in with the equivalent of, of more than 13.4 BCM of competitively priced uh, gas. And that's when we did the matching. That matching process was done. Uh, everyone's been informed. Um, and we now uh, are in the period of bilateral negotiation between companies. We don't know when that will end. We set no time limit on it. We have no uh, window onto that process, in particular on issues like price. That's for companies to negotiate. Um, but we do, uh, we have uh, requested rather firmly that we're informed of deals that are done, and then we'll be able to announce that in, I hope, in the coming weeks. Right. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. And um, do you actually foresee increasing numbers of participants in the platform? I mean, are we talking about uh, more participants? Are we talking about larger quantities of gas demand in the next auctions? Uh, or is, is, it, is, it really, uh, is it really an open question at this stage? How do we, how's it looking? Yeah. Well, it's a very open question. I'm, I'm not in the prediction game. I mean, you could look at this uh, uh, two ways. Some may, pe some may feel that they've done their business in this first round of tenders. You know, this, uh, in my view, quite uh, unexpectedly strong response. People may have come into the market and, and do their business. Others have indicated to us, both on the demand side and on the supply side, that they weren't going to come in in the first round, but they're planning to come in in the second round. So let's see. Uh, we also hope that some of the people who've come in with what I might call sort of testing volumes, just trying out the market to see how the mechanism works, may then have their confidence build and come in with higher volumes. All of these things we hope to see. But, you know, um, it's, it's for companies uh, to decide whether we've created an attractive enough mechanism. And one of the things we're doing in the next uh, couple of weeks is gathering feedback from our friends in Eurogas and elsewhere. Is this a, a, is, are there ways which we could tweak this process to make it a slightly more attractive? I don't know on, in terms of volumes or in terms of the length of period when people can uh, make their bids or, or aggregate their demand. Are there different ways of doing it? We're working very actively with all players on this. We have a, an industry advisory group next week, and we'll listen again to the first feedback we get. So I don't know what it's going to mean in terms of additional players, um, but we will be having these uh, tender rounds every two months for the rest of the year. And I think it'll be very interesting to see how that plays out. It's okay. So every two months for the rest of the year, and yet obviously the feedback is crucial. So uh, I'm sure you would be issuing a call for, for feedback as well as uh, greater participation. Okay. Uh, great, Matthew. Um, I was just wondering about uh, a couple of things before we, uh, before we start to wrap up. The first is a uh, the first is biomethane and the second is hydro hydrogen. Now, obviously, Eurogas is part of our part of our prerogative to decarbonize as swiftly as uh, swiftly as is possible. Good. Yes. Uh, that, that, <laughs> means, that means that means biomethane. That means hydrogen. I wanted to ask you if biomethane producers can also add their supply to the platform. Uh, you know, to encourage domestic production, to grow their renewables gas market. So it's important to us. And uh, what about hydrogen? While we're at it. Well, and um, biomethane which of course is, is currently available. There's absolutely nothing stopping them from appearing on the platform. I mean, I think we need to remember that most uh, biomethane production is, is local based on the availability of biodegradable waste or agricultural byproducts and so on. So it's normally produced locally and then used locally. Um, so that might be a factor as to why uh, that wouldn't happen. But to answer the question, biomethane producers are, are very welcome to add their supply to the platform. Hydrogen, of course, and particularly renewable hydrogen, um, uh, we, it's included under our remit. We very much want to see the energy platform becoming also a vehicle for, for hydrogen. Um, there isn't that much hydrogen in the market yet, certainly not much renewable hydrogen. So that's one more for the future. But absolutely, I think you see the potential for this. I was very struck by, in the critical raw materials uh, legislation proposed, there's talk there of using joint purchasing similarly. So I think you know, uh, we, we're we using, we're developing a mechanism, the aggregation of demand and, and then eventually uh, 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 arriving in, in purchase and joint purchase of gas. 
and particularly allied to things like how um, I haven't discussed this, but how we are able to permit people to act as purchasers on behalf of other smaller uh, buyers um, or to be their agent on behalf of, of, of other buyers for certain ancillary services. All of these are options that companies can use now in the future. It's a toolkit, whether it's for biomethane uh, today or for hydrogen in the future. There are different ways now uh, that people can bring their gas to this uh, to the market. And, and we're very encouraged by these first steps. And let's see how we, we get on. Brilliant. OK, thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Um, and of course, that leads me to my final question. Uh, I think you've been very clear on all of the all of the aforementioned. But uh, what's next? Um, you've mentioned we're talking we're seeing every two months there's going to be demand aggregation and tendering uh, until the end of the year. Uh, OK, that's fine. What else? What else is on the cards? What's the measure of success for you? What do you really want to see happening uh, over the over the next few months and, and possibly beyond? It's a really good question. I mean, It'll be for my political masters to decide on the future of the joint purchasing mechanism we've established in, in aggregate EU. Formally speaking, uh, we run until the end of this year. Um, we, of course, will be reviewing the work intensively in an ongoing way throughout the year, re reviewing the work, reviewing the results, reviewing the process. Uh, we need to make a report under the legislation by October on how uh, we think the uh, energy platform has performed in terms of joint purchasing and aggregate EU. And I'm certainly not going to be making predictions now about whether we roll it forward. But all I would say is this. It's been as encouraging a start as we could have hoped for. Uh, we think we've uh, uh, un uncovered here a mechanism which is a really potentially useful addition to the toolkit uh, to, to, to deal with this ongoing crisis. Uh, and so I'm for one a very encouraged and, and let's see what happens next as we move forward. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for 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 everything that you've uh, everything that you've uh, gone into detail over today, Matthew. That's much appreciated. It's really been a pleasure uh, chatting with you, and I'm and I'm very grateful for the feedback um, we've had over the last few months from uh, Eurogas and Eurogas members um, uh, who've taken the time to really analyze this, and and that's been very welcome. And we uh, really uh, relish the engagement with you. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining us on the Molecule Pod today, uh, Matthew Baldwin. Delighted. Thanks very much. Thanks for listening to this edition of the Molecule Pod. You can catch all our episodes on Spotify, Google Podcasts and YouTube. And you can also follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter.